Several American runners can run a sub two hour marathon at Chicago and New York this year just by improving their stride efficiency. Conventional wisdom says that East African runners are faster than Americans because they are genetically superior, run to school as kids, and are born and trained at high altitudes. But our analysis shows that they run faster because they are more efficient. Let's analyze some American runners to see what hidden problems are keeping them from running a sub two hour marathon. Remember, a marathoner takes about 1,000 strides per mile or 26,200 strides in the marathon. Any small problem will be multiplied 26,200 times during the race. In this video, we will measure bounce, stride angle, over stride angle, toe lift angle, upper body torque, and crossover angle. Conventional wisdom also states that the difficulty of the marathon is the 26.2 mile horizontal distance. But as you will see, it's really the vertical distance that makes it so tough. Bounce is how much a runner moves up and down with each stride. Ryan Hall, for instance, moves up four inches with each stride. 26,200 strides times four inches equals 8,725 vertical feet or 1.65 vertical miles. This is equal to running up 6.4 former World Trade Centers in a little more than two hours. Ryan also drops down four inches with each stride, which equals another 6.4 World Trade Centers. This adds another 1.65 miles to his marathon for a total of 3.3 additional grueling miles just from bouncing up and down. Each time he drops down four inches, Ryan lands with more than twice his body weight. Multiply this 26,200 times and he lands with a total of 6,812,000 pounds. This constant up and down motion or bounce is the main source of fatigue during the marathon. African runner Fayisa Lulesa, by contrast, bounces only one and a half inches or 38% of Hall's bounce. It is obvious that Ryan has to be in much better shape than Lulesa when he is doing more than two and a half times more work but is only three seconds behind him so far this year. Bouncing up and down four inches in a marathon is like trying to race a car while it is bouncing up and down. We would never expect such a car to win, but marathoners who bounce a lot hope to win every race. The lowest bounce we have ever measured in a marathoner belonged to Belaine Densimo, who ran a world record 206.50 at Rotterdam in 1988. He bounced less than one inch. His marathon record stood for 10 years. Other talented American marathoners with too much bounce include James Carney, Jason Lemkuli, and Med Keflazigi. Reducing their bounce would be the easiest way for Americans to run a sub two hour marathon. The stride angle is the maximum opening between the front and trailing leg, usually at toe off. We have found that for every degree you increase the stride angle, you increase stride length by 2%. Ryan Hall has a stride angle of 90 degrees on his left side and 91 degrees on his right side. Samuel Wanjiro, who won the Beijing Olympic Marathon, has a stride angle of 106 degrees on each side. This means he is covering 31% more ground than Ryan with each stride he takes. Since he is taking fewer strides, he is also bouncing up and down less. Other Americans with a small stride angle include Meb Keflazigi, James Carney, and Jason Lemkuli. Stride angle is mainly a function of leg and hip flexibility. Our runner here increased his stride angle 30 degrees and now covers 60% more ground with each stride. He also cut his bounce in half. For a maximum stride angle and minimum bounce while running, you need 135 degrees of hamstring range, 60 degrees of hip extension, and 90 degrees of hip flexion. We measure the overstride angle of the lower leg when the foot first touches the ground. For maximum efficiency, 
you want a large negative overstride angle, as you see here in Samuel Wanjiro, so that your foot lands underneath you. The problem is that many marathoners overstride or reach out with their lower leg to make up for a small stride angle. Meb Keflazigi, who has suffered many injuries, has an overstride angle of plus 14 degrees to make up for his 70 degree stride angle. Overstriding puts tremendous strain on the kneecap at impact because the quads have to hyper contract to prevent the knee from collapsing. This sucks the kneecap into the femur, grinding away at the joint and creating anterior knee pain. Overstriding is like jabbing the brakes on your car 26,000 times while driving 26 miles at top speed. You'll burn up your brakes just as you'll burn up your legs. Other Americans with large overstride angles include Jason Lemcooley, Ryan Hall, and James Carney. Increasing the stride angle is the fastest way to reduce the overstride angle. Many distance runners lift their toes as they run due to chronic tension. Toe lift is the main source of shin splints in runners. Meb has a toe lift angle of 35 degrees. Runners lift their toes by contracting their shin muscles. Then, while the muscles are still contracted, they touch down. Their forward motion then slams their foot flat on the ground. This violently stretches the shin muscles while they are still contracted. Forcing a muscle to stretch while it is contracted tears the muscle and in some cases tears the muscle away from the shin bone. This causes shin splints and in some cases stress fractures. Remember, Meb is doing this 26,000 times in a marathon and a thousand times for every mile he trains. It's a miracle he can continue to run. To see for yourself how toe lift wrecks your shins, sit on a chair and do 26,000 toe lifts in two hours. You'll be lucky if you can get out of the chair to walk. Your legs will feel just like you've run a marathon. Other gifted American marathoners with large toe lift angles include Jason Lancouli, Ryan Hall, and Drew Polly. By comparison, Thaisa Lilesa has a toe lift angle of zero degrees. In 1980, we discovered that most running injuries are caused by upper body torque. When the shoulders are tight, the upper body is twisted or torqued to the right when the right arm goes back. This forces the left arm to swing across the body as you see here. To compensate for this upper body torque, a runner has to swing the right leg over toward the midline, forcing a landing on the outside of the foot, and then pronation to make full ground contact. This pronation causes the ankles and knees to move sideways 26,000 times in a marathon, something they were not designed to do. Unfortunately, so many runners cross over as a result of upper body torque that runners and coaches believe that it is normal or even desirable. But twisting and torquing your upper body while you run is just like twisting the steering wheel while you're driving down the street making your car swerve left and right. You can prove crossover is not at all good for your legs by videotaping yourself running in place. Notice that you always run with your legs vertical or zero degrees crossover. Now, place a piece of tape on the floor halfway between your feet and run so that each foot lands on the tape. Notice your legs tire in just a few moments. This is what happens when you cross over toward the midline as you run. American runner Jason Lemcooley has a crossover angle of 11 degrees on the right and 9 degrees on the left. By contrast, world record holder Haley Gebra Selassie has a crossover angle of only 3 degrees on the right and 2 degrees on the left. Other top American runners with large upper body torque and crossover angles include Jeff Eggleston, Ryan Hall, and James Carney. Our runner here reduced his crossover angle from 12 degrees to 5 degrees on the right and 16 degrees 